G'day my fellow media collectors, I'm Troy and this is the Comic Book Movie Collector's Guide and today we're looking at the 1978 cartoon, their Fantastic Three and Herbie that hunk of junk. Oh, okay, okay, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, look, I'll try again. Oh, okay. And today, we're looking at the 1978 cartoon, The Fantastic Three and Herbie, The Abomination on Humanity. Damn it. Oh, okay, sorry, I'll do it again. <laughs> Let's go. And today, we're looking at the 1978 cartoon, The Fantastic Three and Herbie, that fucking robot. Bloody hell. <laughs> oh, shit. Look, I'm sorry. I just can't do it. I just can't do it. I can't call them that. Because, bloody hell, they're not... The new Fantastic Four. This is an animated comic book cartoon that ran for one season of 13 episodes, with each episode running for 22 minutes each. It aired on the NBC television network from the 9th of September 1978 through to the 16th of December 1978. It was written by Stan Lee and directed by Brad Case, with the cartoon being produced by DePaddy Furling Enterprises and Marvel Comics Animation. In 2008, Liberation Entertainment had plans to release the series on DVD, but in October, the company closed their UK branch and cancelled the DVD release. But later in 2009, Clearvision took over the home media rights and released the complete series in a two-disc set on the 1st of March, 2010 in the United Kingdom only and there has been no Blu-ray or 4K HD release as of this video. The story begins with an attempted space flight where the crew of a spaceship are bombarded by cosmic radiation causing them to crash back into Earth only to find themselves changed forever with their experience. Team leader, scientist Reed Richards, aka Mr. Fantastic, gains the ability to stretch and shape his body into any shape he chooses. Sue Storm can become invisible and project telekinetic force fields as the invisible girl. And pilot Ben Grimm becomes super strong rock creature known as The Thing. Together with their advanced robot assistant Herbie, this quartet faces the threats of the world as the Fantastic Four. That's what they're calling it. The Fantastic Four. So the storytelling in this cartoon, or shall I say lack thereof, leaves much to be desired. The series presents a disjointed narrative with forgettable plots that lack cohesion, making it difficult for viewers to invest in the Fantastic Four escapades. Each episode seems to follow a very formulatic pattern, recycling tired superhero tropes without really injecting any fresh perspectives or exciting new twists, opting for more surface level interactions and predictable resolutions. The pacing is another major issue with some scenes that just drag on for an eternity and some that just zip by without giving the viewers any chance to really catch their breath. The uh, subplots are introduced and abandoned faster than the Fantastic Four can say it's clobbering time. <laughs> then there's the character development which uh, is virtually non-existent leaving the iconic members of the Fantastic Four just feeling, oh, how can you put it, just one dimensional and just uninspiring with their you know, it, compared to what the iconic team dynamic, you know, is in the comic books, you know, the interactions just lack the genuine camaraderie that the the kind of was defined in the comic books. The dialogue falls flat with attempts at humour are often sort of elicit more cringes, shall we say, than laughs. Um, sort of failing to capture the wit and the chemistry that, you know, the fans kind of come to expect from the Fantastic Four. 
The cartoon series really struggled to capture hang on, the action and excitement that made the comic book so popular. And that's why, you know, when it comes down to it, I think you've got to put the blame on Stan Lee as, look, he wrote all the episodes for the show. Now, look, maybe he's one of the greatest comic book writers ever to live, but his attempts to take his stories he wrote in the comic books back in the 60s and bring them to life to TV in the late 70s is kind of a grand example of transferring comic books from like comic books to TV. It's not as easy as it looks. This cartoon is perhaps the most disappointing effort to bring the Fantastic Four into the animated spotlight in a way that honored their legacy. And instead, this cartoon has become, how can I put it, memorable for all the wrong reasons in the superhero animation landscape, failing to capture the essence and excitement of Marvel's first family. And so that's why I'm going to give this, I'm sorry, a five out of 30. Well, what's the result? There's not enough evidence. It doesn't compute. So the scripts for the episodes are not a direct adaptions of any specific comic book storylines, but it does draw inspiration from the comic Stan Lee wrote back in the day. With the show staying true to the comic book source material, showcasing the team's battles against the classic villains like Doctor Doom and the Mole Man, and sort of creating newer versions of those narratives for the cartoon. And now, time to address the elephant in the room. As we know, this is not your traditional Fantastic Four. This is the Fantastic Three and that f***ing robot Herbie. <sighs> so, where's the human torch, you ask? Please tell me, please, please tell me, please! Well, if you were to believe the urban legend that is out there, it is because that at the time, parental fears of violence on TV were at their worst. And according to rumors around at the time, the creators of the show were concerned that children would, which is stupid as this sounds, attempt to imitate the Human Torch uh, flame powers by, I don't know, maybe lighting themselves on fire. Hmm, yeah, seems a bit far-fetched, right? And you know what? It is. So look, I'm here to re set the record straight. The fact is, in the mid-70s, Marvel licensed out TV rights to many of their characters to Universal for TV pilots, which include, of course, Spider-Man, Hulk, and Captain America. And since the Human Torch was licensed elsewhere, when it came time for Marvel to make this animation deal on this cartoon, Human Torch couldn't be part of it due to the licensing. So there you have it. And this is why we get this piece of shit. That is one big pile of shit. Now, if we look at the cast here, for myself, I don't really know many of these voice actors except for the great Frank Welker, who out of all the characters he'd end up doing, he did Herbie. But for me, overall, most of the voices were what you would imagine the voices to be of those characters. But I can't say much for their performances, as they really did feel uninspiring and fell, failed to breathe life into the characters. But at the end, that also could come down more to the scripts they had to work with than the effort they put into their performances. Anyway, with that, uh, look, all I'm going to give this is a 7 out of 20. Your insolent remark is an offence to my dignity. Okay, if we look at the case, I love these clear vision versions, um, or the JetX versions. It doesn't really matter. They're very similar. They, they sort of followed a similar sort of theme. And this Clear Vision one is great. 
It's a great shot on the front there with the logo and everything. Really well done. They just put that little bit of effort into it that you can really appreciate. And on the side, that is very stock standard for your clear vision releases. Um, I've got a few up on the shelf there in order and they're all very similar in their style. Now on the back, so that, that is a bit of a similar format they have on all these as well. Same type of uh, setup, which I think looks good. Now, if we look at the discs, there we go. It's a two disc set. And of course, they're great color discs. I love it. There's the thing. And then of course, there's that, yeah, there, that one. <laughs> anyway, um, overall, you can't go wrong with these clear vision releases. They put the time and effort in. They make them look good. They kind of give you what you want, um, and I love. I per, me personally, I love. I love all the releases. So this is why I'm going to give this one yeah, a nine out of ten. It's impossible. It cannot be. So there are no special features on the DVD, which look has always been the standard for any of these Clear Vision releases as they only just held the rights to release the actual shows and nothing else. Hence, you just get the episodes, no special features. Which I've always said is such a shame. I just love a little sort of retrospective. That'd be fantastic for all of them. But anyway, as this is the special features section and there is no special features. Of course, you know what that means. Yeah, it's gonna get a zero out of 10. Those are fighting words. Choose your weapon, you melancholy misanthrope. As I bring up the, the Rotten Tomato scorecard, as you can see, oh shit, there's nothing there. <laughs> they didn't have one. So of course, as you know, IMBD to the rescue. And as you can see, they have a score of, ooh, 5.9 out of 10, which I've got to say, I'm kind of shocked by. Um, look, there are a handful of reviews by fanboys of the show who probably watched it as kids. And as you know, we know they're watching it with the old nostalgia goggles on, and that can make even the worst cartoons look great to people who grew up on them. And don't worry, I have my own pair of nostalgia goggles, but just not for this show. <laughs> Anyway, if we round it up, we're going to get a score of, oh, can't believe this, 6 out of 10. All right, do your voice. I can handle anything you throw at me. Now, when I bought this DVD set mm, a few months ago, I was so excited to finally get this in my collection, as it is one of those super hard, rare to get cartoons on DVD. Uh, officially that is but i thought long and hard about it and you know what i don't think i saw it when i was a kid i mean sure i knew of the cartoon and mm, it's shall we say a lackluster legacy so i thought i'd get to come at this with like an open mind and a fresh take on it with no sort of nostalgia goggles on or all that and oh my god no wonder it has such a legacy that it does. It is such a poor cartoon in so many ways. From the poor script to the terrible stories to the below par animation, this seems like a massive step backwards. If you compare it, say, to the first incarnation, the 60s cartoon. Yeah, the old one was better. I mean, look at some of these shots. Some of these scenes still have the construction lines the artist drew in them that were never taken out. And some of the proportions of the characters are so terrible. It looks like kids drew this cartoon at times, not a cartoon studio. I mean, I could do a four hour video breaking down each episode and all the flaws. I mean, look, I will spare you guys that rant. Oh, thank God. But let's face it, when in, you know, when you have a great team that is the Fantastic Four and you remove one of its integral parts and replace them with this fucking robot, you are destined for failure. Failure, sir. Utter failure. Now, I will apologize to any fans of the show out there for my take on this cartoon. But to be fair, this is not a great cartoon, even with nostalgia goggles on. 
And with that being said, I'm still, don't get me wrong, I am still so stoked to finally have this DVD set in my collection. Go figure. <laughs> anyway, I can say that I've watched it now. So will I watch it again? Probably not. I don't think I can handle watching that f***ing robot again. And with that, I will give it, yeah, dismal score, I know, 4 out of 20. I'm surprised at you, Ben. How can you be so irresponsible? Okay, first up is a collectability, and of course, this bad boy is a 5 out of 5. Um, due to its rareness and it's one of those ones that I know a lot of you collectors out there want it in your collection whether it's a good cartoon or not just the sheer collectability of this cartoon is definitely got it at the top rung it is definitely super collectible um, and of course the availability that comes down to the fact that it, there was only just the clear vision release there wasn't a jet x so there's not as many copies out there and of course that's why it's out of five because it is super rare so if you do see a copy on ebay honestly they are few and far between so that is why it sits out of five now your average price you are looking at somewhere between and i hate to say this 120 dollars up to 210 dollars they're the price variances I've seen over the time for a DVD. But look, of course, there is nothing for Blu-ray or 4K HD as of this video. Now, the final score. We get a grand total of... 31 out of 100. Mm. Well, what can I say? I wasn't expecting this score to be much more than this. Look, when it comes to this cartoon, it has its place in history. Yeah, not a great place in history, but it has one, and it's all because of, you guessed it, that f***ing robot. Don't take this personally, but even Magneto was more fun than you. Hey, so if you like this video, you want to see some more of my reviews, why don't you click that one there? Oh, maybe you want to see some of my collection updates, got you covered too, why don't you click that one there? And of course, don't forget to do the most important thing. Throw me a like, and don't forget to hit that subscription button on the way out. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.